free to use cash machines are vanishing more quickly in deprived areas than in affluent ones, according to the consumer group, which and Nina's having a look at this. What's going on? Morning. Good morning. Um, are you a fan of the old contactless or do you still withdraw cash to stay on top of your finances? I do. I do a really good mixture of both. Good actually, of both. I'm the same. Yes, uh, sometimes I use... No. <laughs> sometimes you do Do, use... do you know what they just said to me? I, I use my checkbook to... on a regular basis. That's what they were saying in here. They said to get... No, I Put don't do that. Put it through the fax machine. Um, yeah. So there are still uh, lots of cash points around the country. Uh, those who provide them say there are still around 60,000, a little bit more um, across the country. That's according to Link. And 50,000 of them are still free to use. Some of them you pay for, some of them you don't. Now, last year, a quarter of the payments that we made used cash and if you compare that to about 10 years ago it was almost treble that amount so it's going down rapidly mm. and in the next 10 years it's expected to go down a lot further and um, over the past 18 months though and um, there's been a drop in the number of free to use cash machines and that's gone up a lot more in more deprived areas that's because there's been a reduction of the amount your bank will pay to the cash uh, machine providers per transaction. It's happening more in deprived areas. Now, we've been trying to get to the bottom of why this is, and it's a combination of things, partly because if you live in a more affluent area, you're more likely to have an actual bank on your high street, which provides right. cash for free, and partly because of the nature of the companies who are going into more deprived areas to open up these cash machines. And um, so that's meaning the people who need cash the most, who have the least amount of cash, are paying more per transaction. In areas where people are use, utilising cash, um, ATM providers have been forced to find ways to make them economical by moving them from free to paid for. So it's people in those areas who are using those ATMs, providers are getting less money, they're having to charge people now to get access to their cash. So I suppose that begs the question, what's going to be done about it, what they're saying? Well, something needs to be done because 1.9 million people in the UK on low incomes are solely reliant on cash. So which are calling on the Chancellor to do something about it, to give an express guarantee that no matter where you live, no matter what your income is, you can access cash for free. In their words, we are sleepwalking into a cashless society and nothing is being done about it and the poorest are paying. Um, OK. But details on another strike by pilots. This is Ryanair this time. Yep, it's Ryanair this time. Good morning. Turbulent times for airline travellers ahead. Potentially an autumn of disruption. Because today, Ryanair pilots who are part of the union, Balpa, have seven days of strikes planned today. Tomorrow, things will return to normal on Friday, but then they'll strike again for the remaining odd-numbered dates of this month. Now, Ryanair has told us it has managed to staff the flights, though, so it doesn't expect too much impact and doesn't predict any cancellations. And, and remember the impact on British Airways travellers last week over those two days of strikes. Well, their pilots are planning more for the 27th of September. Let's talk to Simon Calder, the senior travel editor at The Independent. He joins us from Edinburgh. Edinburgh Airport, a major Ryanair hub this morning, right, um, Simon. We know they're striking over pay, uh, maternity benefits, pensions. It doesn't look like it's having much impact, though. Certainly hasn't. I've been here since early this morning, Nina, and it's been very, very smooth. The first uh, three plane loads of people to Rome, to Barcelona and Berlin are already on their way. Uh, those left absolutely as, as normal and the uh, schedules for the rest of the day look good as well. And I've checked the other big Ryanair bases, in particular Stansted, which is the airline's biggest base anywhere in Europe, but also Luton, Manchester, Birmingham, uh, Newcastle. Gatwick, uh, the only problem for anyone flying anywhere I can see uh, at the moment is um, two and a half hour delay going from Gatwick to Geneva on EasyJet. If you're watching in the departure lounge, they owe you a cup of tea and some biscuits. But uh, Ryanair have told me there won't be any impact on UK flights today, tomorrow. And even though they've not made this public yet, I understand there shouldn't be any disruption on Saturday either. They haven't yet made any comment about the following Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Sunday. OK, so far so good, though, Simon, which is great for people planning to fly today or tomorrow. Nonetheless, two million passengers over the seven days of strikes planning to fly. Some of them will be wondering, is the safest thing for me to do to try and get a refund now? Would you advise that? 
Oh, certainly not. First of all, you wouldn't be able to get one. Um, unlike British Airways, which has seen pretty much 100% of its schedule work wiped out on the uh, two previous days of strikes and a week on Friday, um, pretty much everything is cancelled there. Uh, Ryanair is saying we're going to do our best to uh, fly our operation as normal. They're in a really strong position compared with British Airways. The strike doesn't have the same amount of support as the British Airways pilots are given to their strike. Ryanair only has one kind of plane, the Boeing 737-800. Any pilot on Ryanair can fly any of their planes, unlike uh, British Airways, where they've got half a different, half a dozen different types. And on top of that, BA's operation is really complicated with lots of night stopping long haul flights. Ryanair, the rule is get your flights out in the morning, get them all back by around midnight and start again the next day. So fewer pilots part of the Balpi Union, which means less likely to have an impact on consumers. Nonetheless, behind the scenes, this will be causing expense for Ryanair. If this conflict isn't resolved, can we expect more strikes in the future? We certainly can. I mean, both with Ryanair and with British Airways, I'm hearing from the pilots individually and from the union that they simply don't feel they're being treated with proper respect and the airlines aren't negotiating properly. Uh, Ryanair says, yes, we can manage any strike like this. However, yes, behind the scenes, it's getting expensive. And of course, um, it's very alarming and disconcerting for people with future bookings. And if you've got an important trip coming up, you might think, well, I'm not going to book with Ryanair. They might have more strikes. I'll go with with EasyJet instead. So very damaging uh, for uh, the airline under the surface. But if you are traveling um, over the next three or four days um, on Ryanair and four, uh, about 400,000 people a day are, then uh, you should be uh, OK at the moment. A different story, though, for passengers planning to fly with British Airways on their plan strikes on the 27th. Last week, we saw thousands of flights disrupted. It cost the airline around £80 million. What will happen with this next set of flights? And what would you advise to passengers who are planning to travel on the 27th? Because they've had a lot of notice. Oh, they have. The airline gives them uh, just over two weeks' notice of cancellations. I think pretty much the entire schedule is being wiped out again. That doesn't affect um, city flyer flights in and out of um, a London City Airport in London Docklands, but also flights either side. So quite a lot of cancellations on the 26th, that's a week on Thursday, and on the uh, day after as well. And that's simply because of the nature of the BA operation. BA has an obligation to rebook people on the same day as they were originally going to travel, uh, even if that means buying a ticket on EasyJet or Virgin Atlantic for them. Unfortunately, I am hearing from some people that British Airways um, says, yes, we'll rebook with some partner airlines, um, but that's not necessarily going to get the uh, best result for the travellers. Civil Aviation Authority, meanwhile, says make sure you insist on your rights. But um, it is proving tricky for some travellers and phenomenally expensive for the airline. This next strike will be probably 40 million, maybe 50 million and then the unquantifiable loss of goodwill and future bookings. Simon Calder at Edinburgh Airport, many thanks. As Simon said, the most important thing to do is check your rights when you book and make sure if the strikes happen are called very close to the time of travel, you are entitled to a refund. Thank you.